Do you ever wonder why I'm always talking over that boil and why don't you just wait? When that thing is boiling, it's the only time I have to just pause for a second. So I find that's when I mow the lawn, that's when I put in my laundry, that's when I do jobs like corn mounts. Check this out. I love getting things like this. Hey man, can you clean these up? Can you make them look good? Bet your butt I can make them look good. And you know what? You can make them look good too. It's easy. Let me take you through the process. I've showed it before. I'm gonna show it and show it and show it until every horn laying on the ground or on the barn is sitting beautifully in somebody's home out of respect. Get them on the wall. First things first, I'm gonna cut this down so I can shape it. And then I gotta remove this hide that's on it. I'll show you how. Okay, y'all, first things first, I'm gonna cut from the outside horn burr to the opposite outside horn burr. I start cutting about halfway, stop, flip it over, then cut the other half. What I'm trying to do is just have a small, thin section of bone that holds both antlers in place. That way I can screw it to a form and put it in any position I want without having a bunch of bone in the middle of my form. That will make sense as we move forward. Then I'm gonna tear off as much of the hide as I can this will be very difficult in most cases. Uh, and then I'm gonna power wash any sort of excess. This particular power wash I'm running does a really good job of getting underneath that hide and washing it all clean. You can see here that one of these crowns had split, which is very, very common. Never stress, we can put that right back together, not a problem. All right, next step in the process is I like to form a backboard behind the antlers. This gives me something to screw into later, you'll see as we go. I'm also using the newest version of GoPro's Hero Cam today, just to give another angle. I've never been a fan of the GoPro. It's a fantastic product, but I've had a failure years ago that's left a bad taste, and I'm trying to evolve back. I like to lay this antler on its back as if the deer was looking straight at me. Then I take a Sharpie or a pencil and I, I make myself a rough outline. Whatever I want my form to look like is what I do here. I take a jigsaw, I cut that out, and then I drill through the heaviest part of the bone below the pedicle of the antler and I screw it to the panel. This gives me, again, a kind of a rough shape and it gives me something to screw to later. In the case of the broken crown, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, just with multiple screws from multiple directions. I'm gonna show you that piece in very, very fast forward. All right, moving along, I'm gonna take my back piece and antler that's all attached together and I'm gonna screw it to a board. This board is gonna act like the wall. So like I'm looking straight at the wall, but in this case I'm looking down. And what it's gonna do is give me a visual look at how I wanna shape that thing. Just bear with me. I screw it in the back and then I take three or four handful scoops of what I call the crown dust. Essentially, it is a 50-50 mix of plaster of Paris and concrete. I don't care whose brand or what, that's what I do. Then I add some water and I mix it till it has the consistency of like a formable clay. Then I simply pack it into every little place on that skull cap and I build it up so I get this nice little rounded triangle shape. Now the shape is your unique style. Anything you want, any configuration you like. This shape you're looking at here has just become the shape that works for me and I like the way it looks on the wall. Form it however you would like. From here, I take a, like a kitchen knife and I kind of clean out underneath the burr so I got a nice place to put a finished ring around there of leather or whatever. 
and then I scrape all the high sides, all the, I just keep working it and working it until it's exactly the shape that I like. When you're sitting here watching something like this and not doing the actual task, it seems super long, almost boring at some point. But the truth is, is this task is really, really fast. This may be 10 minutes total. I've sped it up a little bit to make it look like a faster job as you're watching it. But in 10 minutes, that concrete mixture is pretty hard. So you're working pretty fast to shape and shape and shape. The firmer it gets, the easier it is to fine tune it. Knock off all your high sides, make that nice little divot or groove around the pedicle. Just get it all cleaned up. Then once it's good and formed and you're happy with it, just remove the screw from that base back, if you will, and it should just pop off. Then clean up around the back a little bit and set it aside to dry. This is a little something I did a couple of years ago and it just has stuck with me ever since. I do this on every single antler mount. So I just mix up a two part epoxy. I bought this stuff here from Amazon. It's 50-50. I put one pump in that little clear cup or whatever, mix it up real good, and then I brush it on the outside of that concrete. Now this concrete mix that I use, the plaster of Paris and concrete together, have a real tendency to crack. It's very normal, and because there's lots of real thin areas that you're forming, those areas will crack. I have found that the epoxy will soak itself into that mix and make it very rigid, very, very, um, I don't know, almost like it's its own smooth surface and it's really helped the process. I think it looks really nice when it's all put together like this. So I brush it on, let it dry overnight, and then I get right to the next piece of stretching leather. I scuff it up a little bit with sandpaper, scrape or remove any sort of what looks like a high side, and then, well, here's the next part. Look right here. Look right here. Look. What is it? Tell them. I'm the sweetest dog that ever was. Genuinely amazing. I oh, know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You get your air time? All right. Let's go. I think if he hears me talking, he thinks I'm talking to somebody. He wants to know what's going on. All I'm gonna do is rough up this finished edge. Okay, let's just stretch this one so we can get it out of the way. I'm gonna let you look at this real quick, kind of close, and then we're gonna pull some leather. Mr. Beans is over there terrorizing the leather pile, because it smells amazing. Leather does smell nice, you know? You know people talk about the new car smell? If you got a leather car, you're talking about the leather. When you're getting ready to cut the amount of leather you need, you wanna be able to just overlap your form by about two or three inches. Uh, deer leather will stretch just a country mile, right? It goes a really long way. So I like to account for that. And I never really cut these just right. And I think I can get both of these crowns out of this last little piece of leather. Again, I buy my leather from the leather guy. I think it's the leatherguy.com. Fantastic stuff and I always use deer leather. Not because this is a deer, but because deer leather leather <laughs> deer leather stretches so well. See if I can go all the way around. If you've ever worried about too, oh I got it feels like I got a little bump or something, just take your leather and stretch it over. If you see something and it's real obvious, Sand it now. I think that's good. Now I take and I lay my leather over like this. So that I know that I'm gonna put it right back like that. Then I take spray adhesive, run a little, run a little test shot, 
and then I just spray that that form. We're really only worried about the front right now. This has all got uh, that spray adhesive on it, and I'm gonna lay my piece of leather in here. about cut myself too thin <clears throat> all I'm doing now is just kind of stretching around I know that's obvious but you see here we have a, like a little indentation underneath the burr I'm just gonna cut that leather so it lays in that indent indentation and I'm gonna follow it around the antler I'm gonna put a piece here that's a finished piece, so I just wanna make sure it's not a real rough cut. Something that's nice and clean. All right, flip it over. Be careful you don't set it in your glue if you had some glue on that side. This is where I tell people, it doesn't matter how that backside looks. It just really doesn't matter because we're gonna clean all that up. When I first started doing this, I wasn't using leather, I was using felt from like the Walmart craft section. It was super cheap, super stretchy, looked nice. And then I was trying to be unique and I was literally buying like kitchen towels from the 99 cent store and using like different patterns. And I was just trying to teach myself how to shape and do all that stuff. And um, a lot of those mounts are still hanging in my dad's garage. I should go over there and, actually I'll be over there tomorrow. Maybe I'll film it and drop it in this film. Some of my early work and you can just see how I've come a long ways. Um, and in some ways I haven't changed at all. I find that sometimes because I like that real sharp aesthetic look, um, I mean I like really clean aesthetic, that I get too close and you can't see what I'm doing. I just plugged in a generic hot glue gun. This one came from like Hobby Lobby or something. It's the perfect piece. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is anywhere it comes around the back and adheres to the back of the panel, I'm gonna hot glue it. <clears throat> You'll see a lot of guys use staples and knock them in. Because this is a concrete form and I could break it, I like the hot glue and then when it's jam nutted up against the panel, it's not going anywhere. Uh, and this is designed to hang on a wall. So. Okay, back of the panel. This is this is what I want to be really nice and clean on the back. This will keep that front together. Because of the way that's put together, that's as good as or better than a staple. Okay. Now that that's kind of glued in place, uh, this is where I do my little cleanup in the back. Okay, now I'm to here. You can see where my, my spray adhesive kind of held it in place. I'm gonna pull it back because I like the strength of the hot glue. Hopefully I'm not making that too confusing. Hey, I'm popping in here as the voiceover guy because during this clip my wife and I have a conversation about kids' Christmas gifts. Yes, that's what we did. Uh, here I just cut two 
pieces of the same exact leather and I'm putting the suede side out to give it a little contrast. All I'm doing, these are maybe uh, three eighths of an inch, maybe half, of, half inch wide. I hot glue it around the back and then pull a nice little tight ring around the base of that antler. That little groove we cut in there allows me to tuck that leather up underneath. Super simple, super easy. I just wrap it around the back in any way that it'll lay. Remember, all of that is hidden behind the antler and the panel, and especially when it goes on the wall. All you're seeing is the face of that crown. So don't try and make it perfect in the back. Everything you're seeing here is hand-shaped, hand-formed, hand everything. That is special and it makes it kind of unique to be done that way. So if you're after perfection, you're gonna have to go to a pre-formed product. If you're after handmade, man, you're in the right spot. you know the drill here. Pick whatever panel you want. This is where you need to get creative. Use anything you got or build something super cool if this buck is for you and it's got some sort of sentimental value. I have friends that do these on rocks, old barnwood, old window frames, whatever you want, get creative. I run two screws through that panel and screw a little hanger on the back. Again, anything will work. Then you run through the panel into the back of the form board that you put into your form, right? That piece of uh, wood on the back and then get her square and she's done. Let's watch one more crown mount at 20 speed. I'm not gonna stop, I'm just gonna get her done. See if you pick up something new and then we'll look at them when it's all said and done here and close her up. This is the broken skull cap buck. This is the other. I think they look great. These are, um, I don't know if I said it or not, these are just regular pine panels from Hobby Lobby that I just stained and put a hanger on. Man, get creative with your panels, especially if they're for yourself. Uh, a lot of guys, I'll just send them like this. They'll zip them off and put something else on them. Uh, this process uh, for me is so fun. It takes me a little bit of time to get them in between skulls, but I love the finished look. There's something super cool and super classic about what I call a crown mount or what some people call an antler mount or whatever. I think they're just super, super cool. So give it a go. Shoot me a comment if there's something you got questions on or you missed in the process or I missed in the process. I will absolutely cover it. Uh, don't forget, if you get the opportunity and you have the money, I'm not asking anybody to spend any money if you can't afford it. I get a lot of apologetic comments. If you can afford it and you want the Whitebone Creations app so you can take all that new content and watch it, wonderful. It is available, iOS and Android. Otherwise, just visit us here on YouTube where you've been. I'm gonna share as much as I can without getting kicked off. Thank you so much for everything. Uh, I appreciate y'all. Have a fantastic year and uh, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching.